name is Xuan. I'm working on data importing at WePay. Uh, today, I'm going to introduce how uh, Mexico is used as a metadata store and uh, how it works in Amazon. Okay, yeah, Amazon is a very uh, powerful data discovery and a metadata engine, uh, which has a very good support for uh, graph databases. Um, considering some companies, including my uh, workplace, there is no uh, graph database, and uh, it may take some uh, effort to uh, to set up everything. So we plan to um, support uh, Mexico as one well of the metadata store, and uh, so that people can use the uh, existing Mexico infrastructure uh, in Amazon. And uh, on the other hand, uh, many developers already have the uh, the knowledge about a uh, relational database. So this kind of support to uh, make it easier for some developers to make contributions to the uh, community. Okay, uh, the changes for uh, Mexico support uh, is some happening in uh, Amazon RDS repo, um, data builder, and the metadata service. Amazon RDS repo um, supports in Mexico for now, and uh, it has the OIM models, which works with some uh, so called Alchemy OIM. Uh, it is a pass some uh, SQL uh, toolkit that can uh, map the classes to the database. Yeah, so in RDS model, the metadata resource like uh, uh, column, um, database, dashboard can be re represented by, by table and the relationship can be uh, reflected by uh, foreign key reference. And uh, uh, the model was designed according to the uh, data builder models. So uh, there's some small difference though. Uh, for some models like uh, description model, uh, instead of using a single generic description model, uh, Alias model uses um, multiple description model like a table description, that's about a description, a column description, to keep the use of a foreign key reference uh, between models. And uh, um, yeah, currently uh, most of the models can be supported for uh, Mexico users, uh, except some uh, new models added recently. Yeah, that could be the future work to add more models for uh, Mexico users. Yeah. So considering we are using a relational database as the persistent layer, uh, it is very possible that if we would have to uh, update the schema in order to um, like uh, add a new feature or fix some issues. Um, yeah, so RDS repo also has the uh, all the migration scripts uh, working with Alembic. Uh, it is a Python package that can help us generate the, the DDL script uh, so that we can use that to uh, upgrade and downgrade the schema. Yeah. So about the uh, the ETL process uh, for Mexico in Data Builder, um, the ETL process is uh, similar to the, the kind of one used for Neo4j. Um, yeah, in Data Builder, the model implementing uh, graph serializable and the table serializable can work for uh, vertex and um, edge, some concepts that used in um, graph databases, but also um, the record used in relational database. Um, in Table serializable. There is a record iterator that can work with the RDS model to yield the record instance. Yeah, uh, the Mexico serializer can convert the the record instance into the dictionary, uh, so that the data loader, the Mexico data loader, can consume that and can load them uh, into the uh, the metadata CSV files. Yeah, the file name of that CSV file is um, uh, a table name uh, followed by a key. And the content is similar to a table in uh, Mexico. Um, the header is a list of uh, field names, and the uh, the rest uh, is the uh, table content arranged row by row. Yeah, since the data loader is working with the iterator, uh, before I did some uh, code refactoring work to make sure each uh, iterator only yield the element instead of returning a list of um, uh, elements. Uh, the change in uh, not only help uh, improve the, the memory efficiency, but also uh, keep the two iterator, the graph iterator and the record iterator independent on each other. Uh, since the generator is initialized in the constructor of uh, data builder models. Yeah. Um, regarding the publisher, uh, the Mexico publisher uh, would read the CSV files and publish the metadata in the dependency order. Yeah, for example, to uh, publish the 
uh, the table metadata, it has to read the, uh, the metadata CSV file of the uh, database, cluster, schema, table, uh, column, description, yeah, in that order to conform to the uh, foreign key reference. Yeah, some uh, Python function listing files cannot uh, make sure the, the files will be uh, listed in the, in the order of a greater time, even though we can yield the record instance in a correct order. So uh, the method of publisher would first uh, sort the uh, CSV files uh, in the dependency order uh, based on its uh, table name, which is available in, in the file name. Um, and uh, before before publish the metadata into uh, Mexico. Yeah, uh, and then from the Mexico support in data builder, it also supports uh, the old metadata removal task. Um, yeah. Remo removal task uh, supports an uh, deletion with an uh, published tag at the published uh, epochal time, the TTL mode. Uh, we only have to appear in a, a list of uh, table names that we want to uh, remove the automatic data for uh, in the config. And uh, the re removal is a kind of um, uh, cascade delete. So uh, when we delete some deprecated, deprecated record in the table metadata, all its uh, correlated uh, column metadata will be uh, removed uh, automatically. So no often record will be left in the table. Yeah, so yeah, after the latest metadata is available in Mexico, uh, we can uh, use the, the uh, Mexico metadata search extractor, uh, which can work with the rest of the component to, uh, to publish the metadata into uh, Elasticsearch. Um, yeah, currently, uh, Mexico metadata search extractor work for uh, user table and the dashboard metadata. Yeah, the search function in the in that extractor uh, could uh, scan the whole table for several uh, metadata resources. Um, yeah, for example, in order to get the, the table metadata, we have to uh, get the metadata of um, database, cluster schema, uh, table, watermark, uh, column, description, or user usage. Yeah, many uh, resources are involved in. Yeah, uh, the query with all joins could definitely downgrade the, the performance. Uh, the search function in that extractor is using uh, so called alchemy uh, relationship, which can issue some um, sub query with join uh, to optimize the search. And uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the data type of elastic search document in, in Data Builder is, in, uh, is a dictionary. So it requires the result returned from the search function to be uh, consistent with that. We would get some objects on nested objects uh, from the search function. Uh, so that is the metadata, like uh, the, the column metadata and the work, watermark metadata can be grouped into the uh, table metadata object. Um, and um, uh, because of the use of the object, uh, the result uh, from the search function will take up more space than the string result. So for a better um, memory performance, uh, the search function supports pagination. Uh, and if the page size isn't uh, configurable, uh, we can adjust it uh, in the config as needed. And also the search function itself is uh, configurable uh, in case that users have some uh, custom customization or do some projection uh, for the search function. Yep. Okay, about the uh, Mexico support in metadata service. Yeah, in order to use Mexico as a proxy client, uh, we have to fill in a Mexico proxy config, which is mainly used for the uh, connection stream, uh, some connection arguments. Yeah, and uh, by the way, um, the proxy config is using uh, the environment variable called a so-called Alchemy database URI uh, for the connection stream, which is the same uh, as that in Flask ORDC. So in other words, if we are using Flask ORDC and uh, uh, Mexico proxy client, um, the metadata tables and the, the session tables could be in the uh, same DB. Yeah, and the, the uh, endpoint uh, um, in Mexico proxy code, is um, the functionality of that endpoint is uh, similar to the, uh, to the one used for Neo4j. Uh, except uh, some features to support some uh, new models like uh, uh, lineage or feature. Yeah. yeah, so before we use uh, Mexico as the, the metadata store, we have to uh, initialize the upgrade schema if necessary. Yeah, um, the schema migration was supported by, uh, by RDS command. Um, 
yeah, there are some reasons why I put the uh, schema migration into command. Um, yeah, actually, theoretically, uh, we can directly make a, a metadata service uh, initialize the schema if it uh, detects the user is using um, MySQL proxy client. Uh, one concern is that uh, um, if some user just wanted to uh, to initialize or upgrade the schema, he has to um, start and uh, stop the service to achieve that, uh, which is not ideal. And uh, the other concern is that uh, uh, if in the future, uh, if there is a, a lot of um, uh, schema versions, uh, the initialization of um, uh, schema would, uh, would take some time, which will cause the starting of the uh, metadata service to be holdable well. Yeah. And, uh, um, and moreover, if we're using um, a command group, uh, we can uh, support more uh, features uh, besides the initialization and the uh, upgrade. So yeah, after some consideration, um, the schema migration was supported by uh, Flask custom command, uh, which uh, yeah, really the mythical proxy config and uh, works with the Alembic modules and the uh, migration scripts in RDS package. So currently, uh, metadata service can provide some um, DB initialization, upgrade, and uh, uh, reset. OK, about how to uh, start a metadata service with some DB initialization and the upgrade. Yeah, like you mentioned before, we first need a um, MySQL proxy config. Uh, in this config, we have to specify uh, where to load the RDS command, uh, which is in the, the, the path of the uh, RDS command and script, uh, which is in, in metadata service. And then we need an additional uh, environment variable, uh, the pass of the, uh, the web server gateway interface script. And at last, we can uh, start the service. Yeah, here's a, um, a sample script for the uh, development to use. Yeah, the Docker can um, execute the script when to start the container. Uh, the process is uh, straightforward. Um, yeah, the MySQL command is used to create the database if it doesn't exist. And the Flask custom command can um, initialize or upgrade the schema. And at last, the, the metadata service can be, um, can be started. Actually, yeah, that's all I wanted to introduce about the uh, MySQL supporting Amazon. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone who reviewed my PR and the after you documented before. Yeah, especially uh, appreciate the help offered by, by Tao. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Uh, yeah, thank you. Sean? Okay, it looks like there's a question from Michael. Michael Cohen. Hi there. Thanks, Sean, for the presentation. So uh, yeah, we're really interested uh, to try this out. Can, can you give us an idea of, uh, of, of whether or not this is kind of production ready that, that folks could swap out Neo4j for, uh, for MySQL? Yeah, um, yeah, actually uh, we are working on the um, uh, integration and uh, uh, deployment for, the, um, for use, using MySQL as the metadata store uh, for Amazon uh, in my workplace. Yeah, and uh, um, probably I don't have some uh, benchmark data uh, in hand. Um, and I have to say for the, uh, for the publishing job, uh, the performance is almost the same since um, that's a, almost about uh, writing the metadata into the, the backend the database. And uh, for the elastic search, um, we publish in the, uh, the metadata into the uh, elastic search. Um, the performance is not as good as, 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 good as in, uh, new 4 g It would be slower than uh, the new 4 g yeah, about the use cases in metadata service. Um, yeah, I have to say uh, most uh, uh, queries, most of the requests is about a uh, single entity, so there shouldn't be a concern. Great, great. and can I also ask you, um, so yes. I, I, I looked through the PR and, and I, I believe that uh, all of those changes were in the metadata service. And, and I was wondering if you, there are plans to uh, provide any support for this in within the data builder? Oh, yeah, actually the changes in, uh, is happening in um, audience repo, data builder, and the metadata service. So uh, all the modules that support the MySQL 
uh, is available in data builder like uh, uh, the some uh, the models implementing the uh, table serial as well in data builder models and also the uh, the data loader serializer and the publisher they are also uh, they are available already in uh, data builders and also some sample script uh, about how to uh, load the metadata from the data warehouse into the message code is uh, also available in data builder yeah Oh, okay. yeah, I, great, great. Idea. Yeah, I could I could chime in a bit. So basically, is that for, for example, like Neptune and RDS, they have a separate repo currently to define the their specific functions. Like for for MySQL, it, it has a repo called Amazon RDS, which add as the library to contain all the MySQL plus ORM models and used by both metadata and data builders. Yeah, but to answer your question, how to migrate or swap that, I think is still. TBD is I currently I as Shen mentioned he is working to production nice I assume once uh, that is there you you write some talk about how to onboard using RDS but still you need to write some custom script if you want to uh, migrate from my Neo4j to RDS to uh, export your data in Neo4j and then load in RDS something. I see. Thanks a lot. Other questions? Um, I'll ask one, Chuan. Um, are there any, are all the features that are implemented and the models implemented in Neo4j um, also implemented uh, in RDS or are there uh, some models that are missing today? Yeah, I think uh, except there's some uh, new models added recently. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, in data builder, the features and uh, support supports and um, supported uh, um, neo 4 can be supported uh, in MySQL and uh, like the the publisher data loader and the, the removal task and also uh, in metadata service and yeah all the end points except uh, uh, the feature about the new models can be supported for uh, MySQL as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, last call for questions for Sean. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, to th this is this is a very important change and it enables um, more organizations to be able to deploy Amundsen backend uh, and be able to maintain the backend if they don't have expertise, say, in maintaining your 4J. So appreciate you contributing this. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Mark.